people, barbarians of all classes, of all sectors, of all colors, of all creeds, ought to be able to rely on the word of a minister of government. And that has not been the case. Minister John Boyce, Minister of Health, when uh, our colleague, um, Member of Parliament, Maria Agard, brought a motion of public importance to discuss the state of affairs at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in June. Minister John Boyce promises that the Queen Elizabeth Hospital would immediately be granted $2 million and within 10 days would get another $20 million, $22 million. Had the media research as to whether the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, four months after that statement, almost, almost four months after Minister Boyce's statement, in the Parliament of Barbados telling the whole world that the government would transfer $22 million to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Has the media research as to whether the Queen Elizabeth Hospital has got that full allocation of $22 million or whether they've only got $13 million or thereabouts? These are the issues that ought to be of prime importance to the people of Barbados because education is the pillar by which virtually all of us have been able to achieve social and economic um, advancement in this country including about 13 or 14 of the 16 elected members of the Democratic Labour Party could not be where they are but for a free tertiary education. And then, I don't have to say, the health of a nation is the wealth of a nation. It speaks for itself. As Cynthia has said, our education system is in disarray. She mentioned some of the issues. I can tell you as a fact, no hearsay, this is my experience. On the Thursday, in the first week of this school term, I happen to be in the heart of an urban constituency represented by a Democratic Labour Party member of parliament at quarter past one in the daytime. I saw two young boys pitching marbles in the road. I asked them, hey, what happened? Why are you not in school? One told me, my mother can't afford to buy school shoes for me to go to school. The other told me my parents can't afford to buy a school bag for me to go to school. Two young fellas who should be in school in the heart of a DLP urban constituency, quarter past one in the daytime, pitching marbles. One eight years old, one twelve years old. Those kind of issues should be of concern to this Democratic Labour Party government, not flying up and down first class at taxpayers' expense throughout the world. People are our human resource. And uh, the educational system is really the only hope for many of them to excel. And they have been relying on it for many generations. And we know that we boast of our free education and how our people have been able to propel themselves to the top through the education where we have serviced not only in the region but internationally we have Barbadians having been able to access the education they have been traveling the world and granting services at all levels and I think it is a sad time in our history when measures such as these have been instituted that will help to destabilize that proud legacy uh, of Barbados when it comes to the education. I just want to find out from the minister, and I know that he will listen despite whatever negative comments may be targeted at the media at times, but I'm sure that I would like for the honorable minister or whoever may be able to respond to the queries that we have to make us aware as to what is the status of the promised bursaries to these young people. Many of them are now in almost, almost in the middle of this semester and they are really scrunting 
because there is no funding available beyond perhaps what their parents would have been able to offer them or through some lending institutions that they might have been able to been able to approach. But what about the vendor's child? What about those people who have been laid off from NCC and Beautify Barbados to transport board and those entities? How are they going to survive? I can say that some of us around this table now do not have $500 in our name simply because we are trying to make ends meet. We are looking after families whose jobs have, they have been lost or they have been displaced. We've got sick parents whom we have to also look after. They can't get their pension in a few days' time because of whatever the inadequacies is and the challenges that the national shows. So I'm saying, how will these parents whose children have already gone in on the promise that the government of Barbados will offer 3,000 bursaries for those persons who uh, require that kind of help? I am amazed that I heard over 1,500 students apply. I expected about 10,000 people to apply because we know that the situation is touching almost every household. But be that as it may, I want to know from the Ministry of Education, when will that information be fed to the public and those persons who are relying on those kind, um, that kind gesture of the grants be made available to help to allay their fear. Too many of our people are walking around and they're dropping dead, they're falling secretively because when it comes to debt, I know. I know what debt can do, even though I'm not tied up in debt like some people are. But when you go to sleep and the creditors are calling and the, the, the persons you owe are calling and so, it really triggers your, your emotions. I want for those young people to have their hope built up, that trust to be made available again, for the government to release before the end of the week at least what the situation is will they get it according to what the minister and the parliamentary secretary has given to the media or will they not get it according to what we have heard from some um, officials in the ministry of finance let them know so that they can look at alternative routes and the parents can do some kind of little jobs on the side to help them to raise that money because to put to go into the university and then to have to leave because there's no money to pay, that is another dashed hope that will impact on them and, and, their, and, their, and their movements. I want for the government to give the assurance to the families and the students that there will be funding coming and that the reality is that they are called to be told, your name has gone forward, X amount of thousand dollars have been put for you to pay for your tuition costs so that they can get home with their life and to be able to, for us to, having as taxpayers invested in them, that they understand they owe a debt to this country by giving back as a result of what they get through whatever community services or whatever form of activity they get engaged in when they finish their examinations or their period of study. And I just hope that the government and the ministry, uh, the Minister of Education and his team will continue to manage the ministry with the professionalism, the dignity and the seriousness that we have grown accustomed to in Barbados and that it will take out all of those little side comments and the little stupid things that cause people to redirect their thoughts and wonder, are these people serious? Seriousness, stability, trust, and all the other things that go with that must come back into our society. And I do not support any idea that people talk about you're building a society, not economy. One is hinged on the other. And when